My mom is about to meet my dad for the first time. <laughs> I grew up with two moms, Kathleen and Betsy, and I really don't miss having a dad because they both completed a different area of me. This is the family. <laughs> My sister, Sarah, and I have always just had each other. And I love Sarah to pieces. <laughs> I always knew that I was donor conceived. We were imagining you, 18 years from now, meeting this guy, and we wanted you to like him. I don't think I ever imagined that there could be so many siblings. I thought maybe if I'm lucky, I'll find one or two. I think we're still trying to feel around and figure out how we're family. It's completely uncharted territory. We're gonna go visit Carolyn, my half-sister. Carolyn was the first sibling that I made contact with, so I guess she's just the introduction, my introduction to the Donor sibling world. Growing up, I thought that maybe I have donor siblings, but then your mom was the first person to contact me. So that was like the first time I was like, oh, I have a donor sibling, and it's you. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought it was just 19 of us, and then Sam popped up and we were like, oh, Sam is another one that we didn't know about. There's definitely 20 of us, and my mom Sam has like an Excel <laughs> spreadsheet. <laughs> she does? <laughs> yeah, she does has she like with, I think, everybody that we have to date and like their parents and contact info. This is the sperm pipette, is that the word, um, that my mother used. <laughs> and here you can see that it says 1317. I guess she got this on June 6th of 95. So she used a little vial and um, syringe to self-inseminate. Um, and it came in the mail, it was frozen. She said that she warmed it up like so. I found out that my mom has, was actually in contact my entire childhood um, and even before I was born with other moms. Now that I'm 18, the rest of us are also adults. Um, we have established our own relationships with each other. She had these probably in her freezer for four to five months before she decided today's the day that I'm going to get pregnant. <laughs> Donor 1317 was originally approved for donation in November 1993. Since the release of his semen, we have achieved six confirmed pregnancies. The donor continues to be healthy. That is so medical <laughs> and scientific. This necklace, it says 1317 and my moms gave it to me for my 18th birthday. And I think the number represents less of the donor 1317 <laughs> and more of um, my mom's and my half-siblings and that, just my family. It's all different parts of my family. When we were starting this process, first of all, well, there were two sperm banks we were aware of, both in California, that had a known donor program. So this is the questionnaire we got from the sperm bank about your donor. 
Why do you want to be a sperm donor? Besides the money, which was definitely an incentive since I'm strapped for cash, I think that it would be a very rewarding experience. If I never have kids, then I would want to know that I've given that opportunity to another couple. Which option did you choose? Identity release. And explain why you chose this option. It may be interesting to meet my unknown child to see what effects environmental and genetic have played a role in his or her development. If we could pass a message to the recipients of your semen, what would that message be? Hold your head high and be considerate of others. I mean, he just seems like a really nice guy. So that's why we chose him. We were imagining you 18 years from now meeting this guy and we wanted you to like him and yeah. think he was a good guy. So that was kind of our process. You glad we picked him? <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> Kathleen and I got together when we were 23 years old. So we were quite young at the time. She was the kind of person that would walk in the room and light it up. Oh my gosh, Mom, you're so young. Thank you, I think. Not like you're old now, <laughs> but just like... Uh, that's very funny. For the three months that she lived after her diagnosis, she did more living than most people do in a decade, if not more. Julia, this is when we were on vacation the week before your mommy died. And, um... She played the song she had learned. She taught herself to play the ukulele in the last two months of her life and played the song for her whole family. Don't worry about a thing Kathleen was very insistent on making sure that we used the Sperm Bank of California because we were allowed to have a known donor program from that. We didn't have any rights to the donor and he didn't have any rights to us either. Julia was the only person that could make contact. Julia was born in 1999 in January and she was conceived five months before Google was founded. So there was no chance in our minds that any of the Diblings would ever be part of the picture. It wasn't that we didn't want them. It just never crossed our mind. to Syracuse, New York, where I'm gonna meet up with three of my siblings, George, Mari, and Samantha. And I've met George before, and I haven't met Mari or Samantha. What's up? <laughs> Wait, I'm supposed to not, I'm supposed to hide. So they've met before. Oh, fuck, oh, I can't even see you. Hi, I'm Mari. It's nice to meet you too. Okay, wow. Do you see what I mean? I think they look so similar. The eyes. Yeah. yeah. Wait, like wow, your, wait. Your, your nose and your bone structure. Wait, I think it's your nose. Already. Yeah. And yeah. your nose. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. You guys want to sit down? Small hands. Small hands. I have huge hands. What? Oh, yeah. I have ginormous. Yeah, you do. Yeah, wow. I have bigger hands than my brother. We have the exact same size. 
I never really wondered about the fact that I might have these like half siblings, siblings. I like more calling them like sisters and brothers because I'm trying to get more used to the fact that they are like my sisters and brothers. Now it's really become a much bigger part of this whole sperm donor story to me than the father aspect of it. It's so grody that like other people's parents had to have sex. Like, <laughs> I know, so right? Weird. Exactly. I know, right? Like, up to. <laughs> like, <laughs> <I didn't. laughs> Science children. I was a double donor conception, which means that a donor egg and then a donor sperm was used. I felt very alien. I felt very like. In a whole, in, a, in, a, in 50 years ago, I, I wouldn't have been able to exist at all. I felt like I was kind of forced onto the earth a little bit. You know, it wasn't natural at all. And there was a period that I was just, I, I wish that I hadn't been born in this way, really at all. And uh, I almost kind of blamed her because I knew that she wanted a child so bad. And People don't report on the pregnancies are successful. So the spermates don't get a lot of information in return from the families. So apparently there's some problem with like a lack of regulation around that or something. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know, like, should they ha have 20 something kids? Like sperm donations around to stay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. for, you know, I don't know, like someday it might only be this. Yeah. I don't know. Like a super oh, team. I mean, like we don't, I, yeah. we don't know the future of like, of like any of that. I'm down to be like but a brother. I want you guys yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot, you know? Yeah. 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 Like Welcome to the family. Mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> we're not brothers and sisters in name only. Like, I kind of want to make it more than that. I think it's definitely possible to have a few people, or a lot of people maybe, even if I'm good with time management, who I can have really deep relationships with who feel like my brother and sister. I think it's important to do something every once in a while with these people to grow these connections. I don't think it necessarily has to be something where it's talking to all of them all the time, or even having one person that you talk to all the time, because I mean, we're not accustomed to that in our lives, but I think, I think that this can be a family, and I'm actually really excited about that. I can? What would you, oh, what you say? Uh, I, I thought you said, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My half-sister came up to me and gave me a hug today, and I was the first blood relative she's ever touched, and it's a Thursday. Just a random Thursday, and the whole experience is always just it's like shocking and, and bewildering, and, but like in a really beautiful way and like a really touching way. Hugging George, it was like I don't know, a strange sort of homecoming, you know. Just it was like someone that I should have been hugging throughout my childhood, but never did. I wish I could have told younger me about this day, and I just wish I could go back and tell her that you'll find them. You'll find that, find those people that understand. It'll definitely like keep me warm for a very long time, you know. We're still figuring out how family works and how our family works. Um, I don't really know. I don't know where we are in that, but I I, I like where it is. Wherever it is, I like it. Really only about three to five percent of all potential donors actually become donors. It's kind of an exclusive club. So these are the, the samples and they're attached to canes like this and we just lay them here in these nitrogen baths. We limit the number of vials that we allow a donor to produce. If we allow a donor to collect 500 vials, um, you know, if you do some calculations that would be approximately between 10 and 15 uh, pregnancies. It's not what I expected. I expected to be some like crazy, like scientific, all these people like with masks on running everywhere and kind of scary, but it's very normal. We go down the hallway, this way is our collection room. So it's basically just a sink, a chair, the proverbial stack of magazines. I don't know 
know if I want to imagine <laughs> this part. I'm at a restaurant in Cleveland, and I'm here to meet with Wendy Kramer, who's the founder of the Donor Sibling Registry. I'm excited to hear the other sides of the conversation. There are donors who email me and go, wait a minute, my sperm bank promised I would have no more than 10 kids, 20 kids. I'm looking on your website and I see 67 kids. What the heck? You know, and this happens all the time. Sperm banks need to be held accountable. The reproductive medicine industry has worked really hard to stay unregulated. In the UK, they say, uh, you know, donors can't be paid and, you know, a limit of 10 kids. But the problem is all those laws are meaningless when the majority of all people that use donor sperm are importing from U.S. sperm banks. What do you feel like you learn about yourself when you do this? I learn that I love all my siblings and they're so smart. <laughs> And I, I, they just bring up so many thought-provoking questions. Where do you see that going? I feel so comfortable calling them all brother or sister, but also we haven't had that connection for the first 18 years of our lives. So I really don't know. I don't know like how much to connect with them and how much I want out of their relationship with me and I feel like the best way to just do it is to see what happens. It's such an interesting deep connection that is as I mean it's it's love you know mm -hmm. that I don't think I would have expected that you know yeah. I thought I would have I don't I don't know that I saw that coming it's really mm -hmm. sweet I yeah. mean I feel connected so I can't even imagine well, I do. I mean, I see you connected, but it's just amazing. It's really cool. Yeah. It's really cool. I'm glad you have it. It's great. Me too. We're going to meet Darren tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> <laughs> that uh. great. My mom is about to meet my dad for the first time. <laughs> it's about 11.20 and he's gonna be here in 10 minutes. From when you were like 10 yeah. years old, nine years old, you called him Don. Don was my nickname for him because right. we didn't know. Right, we didn't know who he was. Yeah. We didn't have a name. So you called him Don and I thought that was the cutest name. It's very cute. Don the donor. I'm a bit anxious, I'm, I have to admit, but I'm channeling your mummy to be grounded and clear and um, thinking of what she might want to ask him. You've this one. never met a parent before. This one is the, you're the first parent I've met. And you're the first donor yeah. I've met, so that's, that's, that's fair. First of all, I want to say thank you. Because oh, yeah. I have this amazing kid yeah. that you she's give, th she's really been a joy to raise <laughs> and and watch. And and I'm, I really appreciate it. I mean, I don't know if you consider it generosity, but I think it's like the biggest gift you could have ever given anyone. So I really appreciate that. What a great human you are. And thanks. Yeah. Thanks, for, um, thanks for picking me. <laughs> thanks for giving me life. <laughs> I'm Darren. I'm 44. I'm from Southern California, and I work in computer science, software development. Did you ever worry about the parents? I guess, like whether there was going to be a bad parent out there and, and yeah. like, did you feel responsible for that? When I first donated, uh, I, I, I think I was about 19. I remember thinking that, uh, oh, it's so far in the future. I, I didn't really 
think about consequences at the point. When you're that young, you're literally just thinking about your midterm yeah. and about how to you know make an ends meet. It's about once a year, maybe. I just think, huh, I guess that's about 13 years off. What will happen? You know, <laughs> you, know you just muse on it, you know? I think that like many things in life, the anticipatory anxiety is much worse than the actual situation. He was disarming. You know, he was a, a gentle soul that was easy to be with. Did you know how many I had no idea. children there were? I had no idea. They, I, I, I don't know how much the information well, they gave you. So, like, did you know there were any? or did um, you? Well, I knew there were some. I mean, I guess I, I'm curious how you think about these kids. I don't, you know, obviously have a strong connection to them, like socially. There's uh, family is such a broad term. People, uh, you know, you, you, you pretty much have to qualify it. My life is really full of taking care of my kids, so um, I don't really think about all the donor offspring a whole lot, you know, because I, I'm, I'm busy. You know, <laughs> uh, when I do think about it, yeah, yeah, it's a little odd. Not bad odd, but just different. It's good. If anything, it's good. I, mean, I give help give life. I still feel a strange sort of spiritual cosmic connection to them just in knowing that they share part of my DNA you know in, in that sense I, I, I do feel a sort of a connection a familial connection to the to the, the Diblings. From who I've met so far and from what I've heard about them they are all very smart, um, talented, um, friendly, um, good-looking people <laughs> I think Julia's kind of blown away right I'm now. I'm just like <laughs> looking between you two talking to each other <laughs> and you're my biological mom and you're my biological dad and just I don't know why it's just very strange to hear you guys talk to each other. <laughs> For the first time. Yeah, yeah. I, and I'm like sitting in the middle. Yeah, I, I, I keep just going like, <laughs> like as you're talking to each other. In a very strange way, maybe it's um, maybe it's instinctual. I, I feel kind of proud of her. I guess donor seems like the anonymous guy, but he's a real person now, and that makes it. There's so, got to be a better word for it. Take care. And I, I hope you feel better soon. It's good to see you. <laughs> wow. How was that for you? <laughs> I don't know. She left me this note. I was at college my sophomore year in the middle of my midterms and I got a call from Betsy. She said, Julia, you have to come home. After my mom died, I found this note that she'd left for me. So I kind of just keep it there. It hasn't moved. It makes me happy. Every connection that I've made in the last two years even has shaped my idea of what family is. I have gained a lot of family and that was like so much more than I would have ever thought it could be. But I also never thought I could lose such a big part of my family. And Kathleen's not replaceable at all. Um, But people help. I think I'm learning how to live still, and my family is definitely helping with that. My very extended family. <laughs>